Her name is Nisi. Go save the bacon, mommy. Hey, friends. I'm Nisi, the pharmacist. I have over 25 years of practical experience with life coaching, and I'm here today wrapping up this conversation, wrapping up this series that we've been doing uh, this quarter on natural law. And I am joined today by two free men, two radically self-reliant, more than rogue um, masters who are going to um, help me close out this series um, on natural law. And they both also are, you know, um, powerful <clears throat> permaculturists. Um, and producing all the food for their families. So um, I want to welcome everyone to my food church. And I am really excited today to be able to have Mr. Mark Baker from Baker's Green Acres. And I have Tag from Life Done Free. And we, I'm, I'm just going to give a little recap, guys, that, you know, what have we been talking about over the past few weeks um, with this natural law series? So basically what we've been doing is talking about, you know, I, I think a lot of people are very familiar with the natural law principles, the natural law aspects that you can see that are visible or that are incorporated in, in basic science. Like, you know, they understand thermodynamics is a natural law, universal law. People know that magnetism, you know, is a, a natural universal law. They know about gravity. People know about gravity. They can see it. They see that, you know, these universal laws have an immediate immediate consequence. It's never, you're never wondering about it. You know, it happens immediately like this, like gravity, you know, just immediate consequence. Um, and, and what people don't, aren't familiar with the thing, there's a bit of a lot of knowledge that has been hidden or occulted, you know, um, hidden means, I mean, uh, occulted is the Latin term for hidden. So a lot of this knowledge has been hidden and um, it has been hidden on purpose in an effort to manipulate the greater population. And it has happened for centuries, since the beginning of time. You know, you know, like these two gentlemen know that there's always some somebody trying to pillage your village. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> there's somebody trying to pillage your village. And, and they're using knowledge as, you know, a, a, a stronghold, a foothold to, you know, um, manipulate to, you know, as a, as a, as a power structure. Um, and so I think that I believe that, and I, I, I think these two gentlemen agree with me. I'm speaking for them right now and they can tell us about it in a minute, but I, I believe that if everybody knows the truth, there's no tricks. If everybody knows the truth, if everyone has been given the same knowledge there can't be any tricks. You can only have tricks when there's hidden knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this series has been my effort to try to unveil a lot of these hidden, hidden truths, these occulted truths um, about uh, natural law. And also what I've been saying um, all the time is that there is a race to... Um, basically control human consciousness. Right now there's a race to control human consciousness. If they keep humans lost in chaos and confusion at all times, at all times, um, then, you know, they can win. They can win. They can trick you. They can trick you because you're distracted with all the chaos and the confusion. And, um, but if you're, if you're knowledgeable, then you, if you know this occulted knowledge, if you understand how human consciousness works, if you understand how the human brain works, if you know your, your own power, which most human beings right now don't understand that they create their own reality. They get to choose. They get to have a thought. They have an emotion, you know, about that thought. And then they can decide, oh, that's a good thought. Let me do this thing. Maybe I'm going to do this thing. Maybe I'm going to put action behind it and I'm going to make it happen. Right. Like, oh, I think maybe I want to go on a trip. So then I 
that feels good. It feels good. It feels like I want to go on this trip. Then you start doing the things to get ready to go on the trip, right? So your thoughts and your emotions and your actions line up with each other and you manifest a trip or whatever it is that you want to do, right? Because we are creator. We are creator. The difference between us and all the other beasts of the planet is that we were given dominion over those beasts to, you know, steward them, to honor them. And we were given imagination. That is the only difference between us and all the other beasts of the planet is that we have imagination, which allows us, because nobody's saying, you know, I think that um, a lot of folks out there today in this orthodox brainwashing, they believe that, you know, all, all people are equal to the other beasts of the planet. And, you know, that's like incorrect. It is, it is not true. And this is evidenced under natural law and it has immediate repercussions, immediate repercussions. If you don't honor another beast, then you, I mean, I think these two gentlemen, Mark, what happens if you're on the, on the land and you don't honor the livestock that you have there? Um, <clears throat> well, they get sick and die or wander off or. You know, you have to you have to take care of them. Or they might attack you, some of them, if you Yeah. Were. I got if a bull were. that doesn't like me very much. I think he'd attack me if he got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> what do you what do you think, Tag? <clears throat> yeah, you know, it was interesting. Um, you know, this morning my beautiful, you know, four foot five, not four foot five, five foot five, my beautiful bride was out at, you know, minus forty wind chill factors taking care of the animals. You know, and if you don't take care of them, they just simply aren't going to be there. You know, they it's so crazy. You know, they they spend their whole lives serving us. We owe them something. And uh, yeah. you know, we just do. It's just the way it is, you know, and, and right up until the time I take their life, they're going to live the best life ever. So, I mean, I think, you know, to, to that point, you know, we have to intervene in those things. Right. Yeah. And I, I love your point earlier about you know, how we control our reality and we absolutely do. You know, one of the challenges, Neethi, for this whole series for me is getting my language lined up with yours because we speak the same, we speak the same story. We use different words. You know, you talked about, um, you know, the the fight to control, you know, imagination and those kind of things. I just simply call it slavery. And this, you know, this, this, this amazing thing that goes on to, to you know, uh, suppress the imagination of our youth so that they grow up to be better soldiers. And, you know, the Prussian school system, which you and I have talked about over and over again. Um, but I agree with everything you said, and it is going on. But it, but our beliefs are our responsibility. You have no excuse to be in the dark. You you beliefs have to lie on your own shoulders. <clears throat> Mark, what do you think about that? Well, uh, I, I've said that to my kids. I said, I have, I have superpowers. I can control the future. And they're like, no, you can't. And I say, oh, yes, I can. We're going out to eat tonight or something like that. Yeah. And then we we do it. So we have an idea and then we press on through it and make it happen, turn it into reality. Um, so that ability exists. But there are entities out there that do that to us, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're constantly throwing out. You, I, I think you use the word. um spells maybe something like that but i call it spells and incantations mm -hmm. they say things and it gets repeated over and over and over and over like um i uh i wasn't always a farmer i was professional military for 20 years and mm -hmm. i used to hear things like oh there ain't no money in farming and when i made the choice to get away from the the machine and go into something that was about life and not about death. Uh, I still had that, that mindset that there ain't no money in farming. And we didn't do very well at first uh, because we just were in this poor, poor person mentality and things happened, you know, and we got shook up a little bit. And then I started to, Hey, wait a minute. All of these people I've been looking up to, like state representatives and senators and 
attorney generals and sheriffs and all that. I thought they were a lot smarter than me. It turns out they're a lot dumber than me and they have a lot less integrity than I do. And uh, so then I started to think for myself and instead of what they were telling us was the reality of our world, I would I'd try to observe it and then, you know, just ignore them and do what I got to do. So long story short, that's where I am now. It's, it's important what you were saying about mindset, mm. you know, the mindset, that's what we were talking about this, you know, victimhood mentality. Mm -hmm. um, it is on purpose being imposed on us. So beliefs, what are beliefs? Beliefs are just thoughts that you keep thinking. And so if somebody is on repeat in your ear all the time, hmm. ding, bling, 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 bling. And yeah. you know, they're just constantly, they make this constant noise and you're immersed in this noise, you know, and you're not allowed to ever like sit quietly because there's this constant, you know, all the time. I remember my grandfather saying that when we were coming up, you know, in the 70s, he's like, it's so loud now. It's so loud. You, it's never quiet. It's never quiet. Like, you just need to go and be quiet. He used to make us go and be quiet and sit or walk with him. Or he would say, I want us to walk and see things and we'll talk about it when we get back. And I remember we had to go on these silent walks with him and then just talk to him about it when we got back, like no talking on the walk. And then you come back and you sit down and you talk. You don't talk on the walk. Hmm. You, you talk when you come back. And I remember <laughs> it was really cool because the things that we would have noticed, observed, you know, appreciated on the walk. Um, and when we would talk about it later, it was, it was really fun to compare the notes and, you know, whatever, but like he would make us operate in the now, you know, mm. I, he would be like, no, there's too much. There's somebody's telling you something all the time. And I, he couldn't stand it. He told my mom, I'm like, he's like, what is this? They're just constantly, you're constantly talking to them or saying, and this is us. Um, being pretty much latchkey kids. I mean, like, you know, our generation, it wasn't like nobody was really caring about us that much, but like, you know, <laughs> you know, we were pretty much free to raise ourselves. But, but when he came from India, he was just like, there, there's too much, there's too much noise. This is crazy. And now of course we see kids that are just glued to a television or video games or whatever it is, this imitation light at constantly, they never get to sit outside. Yeah. They never touch the earth. They never look at the sky. Mm -hmm. And so they're suffering, you know, with all of these things. Well, this is what we're trying to, this is what I have decided, Mark and Tad. Mm -hmm. I have decided the reason that I'm talking about it in these weird words. Um, and that I invited you guys to bring your words is because I believe that people need to hear this in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And currently we, we know, Mark and I know that when we went to the first Rogue Food Conference, I was telling um, Tag Mark that I had the pleasure of sharing the stage with you at this incredible event. And it was the first time people gathered to talk about being rogue and to breaking out of or finessing the system, like actually like a whole conference about it, it was really crazy. And, um, and Right after that conference, we come home and within weeks, they launched war against all Americans and everybody in the whole world and locked everybody up. And it was the only reason that I made it through that, I would say, is because I had already met everybody in January. And I was like, <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. I was just like, oh, my God, I need I'm so glad I found the tribe before all this crazy <laughs> stuff happened. So that we could get, you know, back to, you know, back to, I was like, oh, well, I'm not alone. I'm not alone anyway. So this is fine. You know, it's okay. And, um, but we have this entire world of people who they've had this knowledge hidden from them. They've never experienced the hand in the soil, the, mm -hmm. you know, the creation. They, they don't know that, I mean, what it is, is if you keep somebody in so much chaos and confusion with all this noise all the time, 
and they're traumatized at all moments because it's just so loud and they can't make it stop, then they're just going to be like, fine, help us. Just somebody help. And that's what they want, right? They, the few, the people are in charge, the people who are keeping this knowledge hidden, the ones that are trying to trick everybody, the ones that have programmed everyone. Because now if you're watching the box, you know, the little noise box, the media box, if you didn't listen to that box, you wouldn't know what was going on. I would. <laughs> well, I'd if, know when it's raining. <laughs> I, you know, I'd know when it's snowing. I'd know when it's cold out. But the you, stuff that they're telling me doesn't right. really have that much to do with me. Like you, you said they they shut us down. They didn't shut me down. <laughs> oh, they didn't shut me down either. They didn't you shut me what? down. They didn't affect my work even for one moment. No, for one for one moment. I mean, it was entertaining a little bit, but I didn't I didn't see it as a it, it just we're not really that invested in the system. So it didn't make that much difference to me. Right. Hence I hate to see it happen to my country. Yes. But uh, and I wasn't for it in any way, but I, I wasn't affected by it. But I've we've pulled away from the system ever since we got out of the military because there was nothing there for us, really, not what we wanted out of life. So. Yeah. I think that it's really cool to see everybody who I see that's radically self-reliant either had a near-death experience, almost lost their life, almost lost a loved one, or they came out of the military. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in, the, in the military, you have a tendency to travel, and you get to see other countries, how people live. <clears throat> and uh, like in Southeast Asia, most people, most, I'm saying 99% are concerned about food, water, and shelter. That's mm -hmm. their major concern. And their whole life is built around that. But you come back to the state and it feels weird at first because it seems so um, like they're struggling for survival. Mm -hmm. But then you come back to the States and you see people are really into uh, nothingness. Like uh, they'll, they'll, their whole life is built around, say, TV shows or, or things like that. Um, NASCAR. I, I got nothing against it, right? But some people are really into that. And uh, because their food and their shelter and their water is sort of taken care of by other people, but uh, I, from what I saw, that can change really quickly. And I think we're, we're watching the beginning throes of that change because if you can control those things, you can control a population of people. It wouldn't be the first time that was done. No, it's, actually the, it's actually the classic playbook, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, go back to history. I mean, this is, this is what the same game they've been playing forever, and it only... We, it only works if we give it credence. Yeah. You know, if we don't pay attention to it, it, you know, absolutely don't work. And we can starve the beast by building our own counter economies and our own you societies can. and our own. We absolutely can. And, you know, I think, Mark, something super interesting to your point yeah. is you were talking about overseas. I'm, I'm a veteran as well. Good. You talk, you talk about overseas. You know, it's interesting. Maybe they, maybe they are the ones that have it right. You know, maybe that lifestyle, because that's what, you know, my whole life is consumed by food and shelter and water. Right. I'm off grid. So I have to manage my own water. I have to manage my own power. I have to manage, you know, grow our own food. We do, you know, do all of these things. And it's such a better life. Yeah. You know, I'd rather be the lion running the Serengeti than the lion in the zoo. Yeah. It's right. It's just not even right. close. You know, yeah. so I, I, lo I love what you said, Mark. And I, I couldn't agree more. I like that. The lion and the Serengeti. Yeah. yeah. I like so that. I'm from India, which is a third world country, which yeah. has their priorities focused in that way when you're there. But then when you come here, then they're very much rule followers mm -hmm. and very programmed yeah. for yeah. this because they were born slaves of the British India Company. 
Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, they're just like, wow, it's so organized here. This is great. You know, and <laughs> oh my gosh, it's also laid out for you. And they immediately become rule followers, mindless, you know, immediately, immediately turn yeah. into that, which brings me to what we were talking about. Um, we've talked about several, several different things, but one, one of the things we talked about, Mark, was solipsism. Have you ever heard of that? Can you say the word again, please? Solipsism. See, it's right here on the screen, too. Can you see it? Solipsism. Oh. No, I never heard that. From Latin adjective solus, alone, and Latin pronoun self, the ideology that one's own mind is sure to exist. Oh, I can dig yeah. that. Yeah, but what it means is that People who, who fall into solipsism, they yeah. believe that everything is relative and that there is no real truth. They think truth is not objective and that nothing about the external world and its workings can actually be known or communicated to others, which is funny because Mark mm -hmm. trains people. He has classes on how to be a radical, how, how to live radically self-reliantly on his land all the time. He has lots of classes, yeah. tag does a lot of teachings. I mean, you both understand and know, and you actually know this. It is known to you how nature works. I mean, just the permaculture aspect alone. And you even know how to communicate it to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we know for sure that solipsism is a, um, it's a control, it's a tactic, it's a psychological tactic mm -hmm. that people use to, um, this is the part of the new age. So what we were saying is that there's, you know, a race to control human consciousness. And they do this through religion, new age movement, politics, um, you know, entertainment, all the divide and conquer, um, education, education. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you gotta, you gotta have your PhD or doctorate or masters or something. I mean, yeah. you know, and both of you are very educated. Oh yeah. I got a post hole digger. Yeah. <laughs> PhD. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and, uh, very useful. I, I, I talk about the proper human diet. I understand what a PhD is. <laughs> like... <laughs> in my neck of the woods that means pizza hut delivery Just so. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um yeah so like uh, you know what people don't understand is that this there is a war against human consciousness yes. to and, and and the result would be to have a bunch of dehumanized slaves well, you both were in the military, both traveled the world, both saw all the things. What, the, what is the number one commodity in the world? Uh, human trafficking, human People. slavery, mm -hmm. or uh, um, just human resource is what they yeah. like to call it in this country. Yeah, human resources. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I mean, I think it's so amazing when you start listening or paying more attention. Like, you know, I was I was hypnotized, programmed, brainwashed, mind control, whatever you want to call it. I definitely was 100 percent mind controlled. OK. And when I woke up out of that mind control, then I keep finding one more thing out. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so great. I'm so stupid. Like, I can't mm -hmm. believe, you know, I fell for human resources or, you know, like think about like they literally use the words. <laughs> <laughs> that we know we don't want to be involved with what this is. And so mm -hmm. what, what the reason that I really was eager to have you guys on today is because I don't know very many people that are 100% aligned with the truth, but you two are. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank like you. Like 100% aligned with the truth. And what I mean is that you guys have your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions aligned. And things that you do every day. You're very intentional and deliberate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, Mark, you and I have had many conversations. You will not bend the knee mm -hmm. 
to lies. You will not bend the knee to lie. He will not. He won't play the game a little bit. He yep. won't a little bit try to help anybody feel good for one second because he will not. And, and he's right. You can't. You know why he's right? Because it's immoral. It is immoral to operate outside of that alignment. He, he can't do it. He can't pretend, you know, if he's not lined up with his thoughts, his actions, his emotions, then he's lying and he's not going to lie to himself. And or to anybody, he's not going to pretend anything because it is 100% immoral. And that's the reason why me and you, Mark, were like fast friends, because I don't have time to figure people out and all their agendas and all the whatever crazy. And Mark is like, you take them or you leave them and that's it. And, you know, yeah, I, there's, the there's so much to say in what you just I have so many comments <laughs> on that, but um Say them. You know, we met at the Rogue Food Conference. And at first, when I heard that name, <clears throat> I thought this is going to be a conference where we point out the powers that would like to be powers that be. Right? They'd like to. They're not anymore, I don't think. And not in my opinion. But I thought we were going to point them out. But instead... Uh, we were supposedly rogue, and I have a problem with that. And mm. uh, Tad, you and I, as as military, we take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, foreign and domestic. But we're different than, say, law enforcement. Mm. We we pledge to do that with our lives, right? Mm. And I had people around me that lost their lives, but they did it willingly, and mm. I respect that. And uh, we go to some a conference like that, and it's about creating food. So we're going to grow food. We're going to manage livestock. We're going to do value-adding things to the stuff that we grow. And we have to figure out ways to get around this parasitic class of people, the, uh, the bureaucrat class. And I'm supposed to believe that you know, I believe that I'm doing what I am have the right to do per the Fifth Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, no, you don't. So mm -hmm. I'm rogue. I don't mm -hmm. I don't buy into that. I don't. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't like the terminology rogue food because I think they're rogue. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a constitutional right to grow food and sell it to who we want, consume mm -hmm. it what we want. They're trying this illusion of, yeah, you can grow food so long as we say it's okay. Mm -hmm. And they, they self-appoint themselves and they create regulations about raw vegetables, raw milk, raw meat, and all this stuff. It's, and, it, and I went to the Rogue Food Conference. Of course, I never got invited back again. But I said, that's baloney. That's absolute baloney. You have no right to take this away from me per the Fifth Amendment. Of course, we had lawyers standing up, banging the table, saying, oh, yes, we do, unless you use us. You know, it's never going to work, but that's probably why I didn't. I didn't so me, and, me, and Mark are, me and Mark, I think, were the only, mo the most rogue people there that day because we didn't care. Yeah. We Neither one of us have participated in the orthodoxy or tried to coddle. I mean, we told them to leave because they have no jurisdiction over us. Um, I, that's not exactly true for your listeners. They should know that for, okay, I've been out of the military for 18 years this year, but for the first 13 years that I was out, I mean, I was a 20 year guy. So I was, I followed the regulations. I followed the rules. That's the only way you make it 20 years. Mm -hmm. You, you learn to swallow that pill, you know, after a while, because, your focus is on other things, but yeah, I cut my hair to, to their specs and I shine my shoes to their specs and all that stuff. But when I got out, I figured I had to continue doing that. And so I contacted like the Department of Agriculture and the U.S. Department of what do I need to do to make this work? And I jumped through all their hoops and paid them money. I would pay them money every year. So they could bless me with their magic wand, right? But if I didn't pay them money, then they wouldn't bless me. And supposedly I couldn't do 
what I was doing, like processing chicken, and <laughs> milk and cow, all them really radical things. Right. And so uh, we learned after doing business with them for a little while that uh, it there's there are corporations sort of like any other corporation, like, say, Walmart. Uh, if you want to go into Walmart, they say, we prefer you don't carry firearms in here. And it's sort of like if you came to my house and I and I say, I prefer you don't use bad language in front of my kids. Now, you still have the right to free speech. But I'm saying I prefer you don't do that. And if you don't do it, I'll take you by the scruff of the neck and march you right out, you know. And they have the right to do that in their house, too. But on private property, if I want to sell milk to my neighbor, my government has no <laughs> they have zero authority in that realm mm -hmm. you know if i want to sell raw milk at a retail store they triangulate on you because usually the store has a license and they won't allow raw milk to be sold in their store but like person to person constitutionally we have the right to do business unfettered by our government mm -hmm. right now, now what what part of that is so hard to understand and i i think that should have been the primary message at the rogue food conference is you already have the right to do this. You just have yeah. to do it yeah. and let them take their best shot. Right. So that was what we, what, what I was talking about and what Mark was talking about. Cause I said the same thing. Remember? I mean, I did it my different own way and he said it his way, but we were saying that we told the, the people, I mean, we, we, the people have the right to do whatever. And those people don't have any right here. That is all. Well, we don't have the right to break the law. We're not. Well, you know, okay. we don't first, first Even of all, on private property, we don't have we the don't. right to do, we don't have the right to cause harm. Mm. We, we don't have the right to cause harm. Well, that's a pretty nebulous statement. Because well, what if, I mean if, is that the laws, the laws are, are a lot of these laws are illegal. <laughs> Like Which one? the ones that are all anti-constitution, like there's too many of them to get into, I think. But and I don't want this to turn into this whole legal yeah. conversation. So, I mean, in the sense, I, I don't want it to turn into this. Um, okay. I, I don't want it to become confusing, too confusing in this way. I want I want to stick a little bit to the whole natural law aspect for just a minute, because okay. because. One of the things that we were talking about, Mark, um, and I'm, I'm addressing you more, Mark, because me and Tag have been having this conversation a couple of times, right. some of the previous episodes. OK, but right. um, <clears throat> like, for example, let me let me just say this. See, we were talking about worthiness. We were born worthy. All of us were born worthy. You know, we are all good enough. We're good enough. We don't have to prove ourselves like our worthiness to anybody. You know, just the fact that you were born you were born worthy. Uh, mm -hmm. And we were talking about how to, in today's Orthodox world, there's this constant equality conversation and equal means same, right? And we're not the same. Nobody's the same. There's no two snowflakes that are the same because nature is not repeatable. Right? Okay. So, a lot of what we're saying is that under natural law, which is, you know, the Constitution codifies natural law. It does. And and under natural law, the only real rule is to do no harm. Now, yes, there's a bunch of little details, you know, under that. Mm -hmm. But if you operate in, you know, in alignment with your thoughts and your emotions and your actions, we were saying like, I don't know any human being who is out there going, I just want to go hate somebody today. Hmm. I don't think there's anybody, I don't think there's any religion even that's teaching people to just hate other human beings. Like just go out and hate all the humans. You need to hate them. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's, there's that going on. There might be other details. Yes. There's differences, you know, um, I don't, I don't think there's anybody, I think every one of us is liquid love and we're all seeking love. We're all seeking to fit in. 
we're all, you know, and I know there's a, a naive, naivety to that, that, you know, you two military guys are like, yeah, okay, whatever. Everybody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, you know, you show up late for work and you just say, hey, I'm worthy. I'm worthy. You have to find out in a hurry that you're not that worthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, being responsible and, you know, like we were talking about the difference about doing work, you know, work and, um, and, you know, needing a job. You know, like, like that's what most radically self-reliant people become are, are radically self-reliant because they're like, nobody's going to tell me what to do and I'm going to create my own world and I'm going to, you know, make my own everything and I don't need them. And at the same time, you need labor and you want people to come work with you and be vested into your project and whatever. And I feel like, you know, it's not about the job. It's about the way that, you know, like working is good. We, we, we want to work. It, we're happy when we create. We're happy when we do things that we love. And when we're, you know, and yeah, there's an appreciation that goes along with that. I think that if you have an intention to raise a barn, then you're going to have a schedule. And the people who come to help you raise that barn are going to be vested in raising that barn. And they're going to want to do a good job and they're going to want it to be easy for everybody. You know, like easy work for everybody. And so they're going to want to cooperate. And that cooperation, you know, is very different, you know, from, um, yes, there's always that irresponsible somebody. But I think the irresponsible somebodies usually are more found in this work environment where they're working these nonsensical jobs that are not really allowing them to be as creative or as powerful as they are born to be. Okay. What do you, you guys have kids? What do you think? Don't you see that in your children? Uh, can you uh, encapsulate that question a little bit better? When, you when know, you want, when you boil want that to, down a little bit. When you want to encourage your children, when you're trying to shape your children to be responsible, hardworking people, yeah. then for you to get them to be hardworking and go work at Walmart, you're not going to get the same reaction as the hardworking, uh, you know, somebody, if you allow that child to express their passion in a way where it is more uh, appreciated and valuable. And like, I don't know, Mark, you have one of your, I, I, I don't really know all the details of your kids, like all the details of their, I don't know them that way or anything, but I think yeah. one of your kids is doing your media, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it looks great. He must just love it. But yep. like, if he didn't love it, would it look so great? I don't know. He he did a career change. He was a a welder for a while, and then he wanted to come back to the farm. So he went out there and got a little perspective, and then now he's working back with us. All of our kids but, go um, get a perspective because they can't work with you otherwise, right? Like, because that's not a real job if it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear that all the time. I hear, um, oh, we're just hobby farmers. I hear that from mm -hmm. people around here. It's kind of funny. I compare my bottom line with them any day of the week, but yeah. Um, I think what you're sounds like what you're talking about is leadership. So uh, my kids, there, there's eight of them, by the way. We had uh, four more after I got out of the service, and like my youngest now is 11 years old and he's running back and forth on the tractor right now, bringing cordwood up to the house because we got this big storm coming in. And um, I challenge them to do things that I know are hard. And I know this possibilities that I know they're dangerous things, right? But I calculate the risk and then I tell them the things that they need to know. It's sort of like being in the military. I mean, very dangerous things all the time, but we minimize the risk mm -hmm. by talking through it and practicing and training and all that stuff. So we do that on the farm and um, <clears throat> prosperity comes on the heels of that. I mean, if you work hard and you pay attention to detail, you will make a gain. And that gain uh, equates to 
all kinds of things. Could be dollars, could be calories. There's all kinds of things that it's a gain on. And I, uh, we were talking before, and I think, like, I, I'm not at the point anymore where I want to save the world. Like, I see American society as sort of like a, a ship that's hit, like the Titanic. I mean, it's whacked. It, it's whacked into an iceberg. That has happened. Um, and that's because of poor leadership and greed and things like that that I don't have any control over. But you still have a good population on that ship that says, oh, there's a good movie on tonight, so I don't want to miss the movie. Or, hey, what time is the bar closed? You know, bring me some more drinks here. Or my food is still coming out from the dining when other people are saying, nope, I'm getting off this ship. I'm getting in the lifeboats. Yeah, it's cold out there, but this thing is going down. So I don't think we can uh, necessarily fix our society. I think we just have to create an alternative and say to people, hey, if you want to come, fine, you can come with us. But it's not going to work for you if you're not interested in helping and uh, gaining skills and being a you know a good troop if you don't want to help then stay in the in the theater stay at the bar you know i don't want everybody to come it's not really for everybody uh, because i tad you would agree i mean you even said it that your wife's out working in negative 41 this morning that's not easy no <laughs> had to do some stuff today that wasn't easy but when all is said and done i'm sleeping good at night i eat good i have good friends i got a good way of life i could not find that way of life like some of my friends uh that i served with you go 20 and then the good jobs open up to you especially if you're in a good war you know we had plenty of stuff going on in afghanistan there's a lot of spoils there but I didn't want any part of that anymore. That was too, I didn't want any part of that. Um, and some of that was hard, but there's a lot more hardship in the farming world, I think. But uh, that's what builds character. That's what, that's why my kids are the way they are. My kids are all super duper kids because they had to do hard things. And they, they were never like, a foot in this world and a foot in the other world. They, they didn't even know the other world existed until maybe they decided, hey, I want to play high school sports. So they go to high school, you know, because we homeschooled too. And uh, then they'd find out, wow, there's a lot of weirdness out here in this world. <laughs> and I mean, it's gotten serious. It's gotten weird. really serious. Weird. Okay, look, I want to put, put um, yeah. Grumpy Acres question up here. Okay. Or statement, rather. Um, well, it's a question. Legal and ethical and moral are two separate things. So I want to talk about the problem is um, to, to what this, this is something for you to think about, Mark and yeah. Tag. Moral relativism. Moral okay. relativism is a destroyer of all freedom. OK, moral relativism is the ideology that religion or the religion um, that objective morality does not exist inherently in nature and that right and wrong are subjective constructs, which human beings may invent and arbitrate according to time, location, circumstance, preference, uh, which is something that has been sold to us. OK, guys. Yeah. And in truth and reality, morality is objective. Rights can never become wrongs and wrongs can never become rights at any place or time, regardless of how many people believe or wish for it to be so. <coughs> so, so what is truth versus lies? What is moral versus immoral um, is not my opinion, not in my opinion, but under natural law, truth aligns with morality and lies align with immorality. And how do you know? What is your um, litmus test for this goes back to what I was saying. Your thoughts and your emotions and your actions have to line up with each other yeah. for it to be a moral action. 
Um, Mark, I'm going to talk about a conversation me and you had. He, he yeah. There was something that, that um, I was asking him to do. He didn't want to do it because he didn't feel like he was being honored correctly. And he was, he was like, no, I'm not going to do that because, because it doesn't work. Right. And it should be done this way. And he wasn't being like, he wasn't being an ass. He was just saying, I don't want to do this because this is not correct. It's not right. And it went against his, his, um, this is the, this is where people start saying it was your belief. It was your moral standard. Okay. But that's not true. Um, it, the truth is that when you want to honor somebody, then you do it all the way with the thoughts, with your emotions, with your actions, everything needs to line up. And yeah. when no one is coming, if nobody was stepping to him aligned in those three ways, except me. And he was like, no, this should be happening in a different way. If you, if you know, if we're going to do this. Yeah. So, and he was right. And I think anybody and everybody would feel that way in that situation, but he didn't bend as he shouldn't have. He was mm -hmm. true to himself and that's important. I respect it. And everybody, I mean, no one cannot respect him for that. So, and anyone who does, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is immoral because you have to honor, you know, someone completely or not at all. As you know, if you go up against, I don't know, a bear in the woods or whatever, right? Yeah. That's an easy one. I can comment on that, but I don't want to suck the air out of this conversation. Tad, you want to? Yeah, there is so much. And I, I've taken a page of notes as you guys were talking, and uh, there's just so much to all of this. You know, yeah. I think in the end, there is only one truth. However, I don't think that it, I think the problem is everyone's at a different stage of their journey. And so their perception yeah. of the truth changes as time goes on. I mean, what I believe today is very different from, I mean, not, there wasn't very many years ago when I was wearing a suit and tie every day, running a 900 employee company, doing business all over. And it wasn't very long where that truth was my truth, even though I mean, say that, yeah. that reality was my reality as I yeah. continued to journey towards that truth. Right. So I think, it, I think, <clears throat> for us to do our job as freedom seekers and as leaders, what we have to be able to do is to speak to each of those individual bubbles and help people through that journey, not by just simply saying you're wrong because it's, not, it's ineffective, <clears throat> even if I believe it. You know, you talked about commodity and you talked about what's the most, you know, the biggest commodity out there. And the, the fact, in my opinion, is it's energy, period. Mm -hmm. It is energy. Yeah. Now, whether you're yeah. talking about energy of a, of a carbon, whether you're talking about a solar energy or human energy. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is our world, human energy is the cheapest form of energy. Yeah. Right. Because you can enslave, yeah. you can do, you can do all of these things. So it's really, to me, comes down to energy. And when do we as a people decide to remove our production and allow our production to work for ourselves? And to work for our families and to work for the people that we love, which is, you know, the Aaron Rand book, um, right? And about us going galt, which is, Mark, in my opinion, what you did. You went galt. And that's what I did is I went galt. And it's so fascinating. You said something that, Mark, I will take away from this conversation and I'm going to really ponder on. And we were talking about the rogue food and how rogue is such the wrong word. It is. Been, <laughs> but I've been saying for years, you know, look, I went galt. I'm feral. I did it on my, you know. I've been using these words, but maybe maybe I am making a mistake there, and I need to be focusing more on I'm not the weird one. No, I'm not the right. It's it's the systems that come in to, to to Grumpy Acres' point of legal and ethical. Just because something is legal, don't make it moral, right? No, should, I, I don't agree with that for a second. And there are That's laws out there. The, that was why I said all of the laws, all the current laws under the corporation yeah. are yeah. illegal. They're yeah. illegal. And yeah. the, the laws um, under the Constitution were, ba were you know, uh, codifying um, natural law, which is based in morality, mm -hmm. which we just defined. Morality is when your thoughts and your emotions and your actions are aligned. I don't know of any I don't I, don't, I think it's impossible mm -hmm. that somebody. I think it's Im impossible that somebody is joyfully 
murdering somebody. I think that you're defending yourself because what you're doing is right because someone is violating you, they're attacking you, something like that, that, you know, but I don't think that you are, I don't think someone, you know, cause I'm just going to the extreme thing of what people would say is immoral, like to violate somebody or to, to cause harm. Defending yourself is one thing. I don't know anyone who's attacking somebody happily, joyfully. You have a lot of, Order followers, you know, which is immoral because they don't even know why they're doing it sometimes and or they believe they can't ask or, you know, whatever they've been told and trained. You guys can speak more on that. I don't want to, like, get into that too much. I don't, I don't want to disrespect. I just didn't like this is an this is a hard conversation. I think that needs to be had a little bit for people. To See, have. it is, but it's not for me. And that's you. You are uh, reveling at the fact that I don't bend the knee, um, because I, I actually uh, my mother-in-law claims that you're too black and white. And I I say yes, it is either right or it is wrong. It is black or it is white. It is you know it's one or the other. And I don't see where this you know runs together all the time. So uh, like what you were talking about just so the listening audience knows, I was being invited to speak at a conference, which is a pretty big deal. It's a, it's a big conference. And the guy that was putting it together didn't ring my phone. He was asking somebody else to ask me if I would. And I, want, I had questions like, where am I staying? How much am I getting paid? And then, well, uh, that, and it never happened. And so I just said, the hell with it. I got better things to do. I have a farm to run. I That doesn't pay my bills speaking at a conference. So, uh, yeah, I didn't bend the knee to that. Um, when it comes to laws, uh, we are, this is a representative republic and we're governed by a constitution. And it's, I, I know firsthand because I hit the press the test button on it. Mm -hmm. um, if a law is not constitution if it does not line up with the federal constitution i'm under no obligation to follow that and it would be on say uh the powers at b or the powers that think they're at b uh to call me on that and then okay let's go to court and we'll talk this over because you know they they do like to say that well the constitution isn't everything that it used to be yeah they like to say that but uh, how many of you still have the right to free speech like what we're doing now? All of you do. You all still have the right to own and bear arms unless you're a convict. None of you have soldiers staying in your house, Third Amendment. Fourth Amendment, you have the right to your privacy, your papers and all that. Nobody's getting their doors kicked in without warrants. It's not happening. And the Fifth Amendment, you have the right to your process. You know, your life, liberty and your property is protected under due process of law. So as long as there's no law against it, you can do it, you know, like selling raw milk. There's no law against it. There's a bunch of stupid regulations, but I'm not a regulation follower. I never have been. I mean, I, they told me to put a face mask on when I went in certain buildings. I just never did because they couldn't make me. <laughs> they didn't want to touch me. I mean, you just don't want to touch certain people and they didn't want to touch me. So I just did what I wanted. Um, I, I feel as though there's a lot of freedom under our constitution, but I, in the beginning, you said that Neethi, you said that there's a, a, uh, a concerted effort to hide things and then tell lies. Mm -hmm. Nothing new, nothing new. This goes way back. I mean, and, that's why we're called conspiracy theorists, right? Because they think that. Oh, I'm one of them. Yeah, they I'm think one. we're just making this stuff up. But like the reason that we're able to do the things that we do, the reason that Mark and I operate the way that we do is because they can't do nothing because we are doing what we're supposed to do within the Constitution. Yeah. yeah. And, and like so they can't do anything. But. You're saying that they, you know, no one's breaking down doors and, you know, violating people's stuff. Yeah, they are. But 
But it's because the people whose doors they're breaking down don't know how to how to negotiate how to, that how to how to stand up and defend right. their property because they don't they don't know the constitution they don't know what they're they don't know their own rules they just believe whatever this guy says and i will tell you that rando right. rando usda fda cdc all those people that have shown up here to in front of me they say all these things that they're 100% wrong. <laughs> they are 100% wrong. And I'll tell them that outside. I don't even let them come inside. No, no. Right. And they don't, they can't break my door down because they can't get to my door. And I'm not even, I'm just standing out there saying no. Like, yeah, it takes a certain amount of courage. You know, if you look at your, let's say the Fifth Amendment, which is a, a huge one, I consider this. Baker's Green Acres is a Fifth Amendment farm, right? The Fifth Amendment says that your life, your liberty, and your property is protected under due process of law. I'm not doing anything illegal here, so leave me alone. And I have the First Amendment to back that up. I have the Second Amendment to back that up. That the Second Amendment isn't so I can hunt deer. It's so I can protect my family. And... You know, I, I don't go on my neighbor's place at night because he might think it's a, a wolf. You know, you, you have to be careful um, around people. And, you know, farmers typically, especially ex-military, they're dangerous people. And, you know, you better do things above board or something bad could happen. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Uh, but our constitutional rights do get violated but you have to have courage and back them up. So if you got, I don't know, you, let's say in, here in Michigan, um, certain counties, they say, well, yeah, you can carry a weapon, but you have to check with your county sheriff first. And I say, no, the Second Amendment is very clear that the rights of the citizens to own and bear arms shall not be infringed. I'm a citizen, United States. I will carry a gun if I feel like it. I never do because I don't feel like carrying guns. I'm not a big, I'm not a big concealed carry guy. I'm not into that because I don't need to. I don't go places that are dangerous if I can help it. Um, so I just I will do what I what I am authorized to do under the Second Amendment. And then if for some strange reason something happens and all of a sudden, hey, what's this? Why have you got this? this gun, uh, I would say, hey, take your best shot because the Second Amendment is very clear, you know, that all throughout the ages, people have tried to disarm Americans. And it's, you know, it's going on every every month of the year, something comes up and they, oh, we got to, everybody's got to turn their guns in. That's not going to happen. Not when you have a rogue government like we do, you know, because if everybody was disarmed, then you'd really be laid bare. If everybody was was destitute and hungry, all they would have to do is put a carrot in front of your face and they can make you go wherever they want. Americans have typically been very difficult to govern because we have been typically we're not we're not where we need to be yet. I don't think as a society, but we've been very um, self-sustainable. We've been. You know, we take care of our own. And so our government doesn't really have, they can't drive a wedge between us, but they've been working on it pretty hard for the last 30 years. Some people just don't fall for it. I, I didn't. It just, it's obvious what they're trying to do. So. Well, I think that it's all, most of it we know is happening within the cities and where they yeah. have everybody all corralled up. Yeah. And, you know, there's enough places in the outskirts where, you know, they have, they, they aren't going to be able to do whatever it is that they're trying to do. No. So no. you're you know, absolutely but right. Um, and, and I think this is the message that people need to hear because the message that the enemies of freedom are conveying is that, Oh, you guys, you Patriots, you're toast. You are toast. It's just a question of time, but that's not true. Um, Thomas Jefferson said 
he quote, I quote, I'm quoting him. He said that when the people fear their government, you have tyranny. But when the government fears the people, you have liberty. Mm -hmm. So why is it my government wants me disarmed? You got a little twinge of, uh, of fear going there? Well, they ought to. They ought to mm -hmm. have a twinge of fear because there is a building rage in this country. I mean, after the whole woo flu thing that we went through and all of that, I know it was really tough on a lot of Americans. They, 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 were, they were brutal on people that you know, were in a situation where they couldn't fight back. That rage hasn't gone away. And when it breaks loose, I've seen this happen before. I've seen it with my own eyes. It's not good. And those that were abusive, um, a time is coming. And they don't seem to see that. And that is, it's typical of tyrants. They really don't think anything will ever happen to them. But they're their day is coming and not really by me because this really doesn't involve me. Like you said, Neethi, it was more in the cities. Those mm -hmm. people were really worked over. I know here I'm in a very rural community. We had some people that wanted to get on board with that whole agenda, like got to put a face mask on and stuff. They got pummeled. They got absolutely pummeled. I don't care if there was a pandemic no other citizen is going to tell me what to do. That's mm -hmm. not going to happen. You can suggest, sir, you should put a mask on, but you're not going to tell me what to do. That's not going to happen. Well, that's what a mandate is. It's a suggestion, which is the education and the knowledge <laughs> that the general public does not have. They don't understand language. Well, so actually, a mandate, like I can mandate something in my home. I can because my children are under my authority. I can say, you will not chew gum in the house. I could, that's a mandate, and they have to follow it. Um, the government never had the right to mandate anything. If they wanted to pass a law, go for it. Go for it. You want to amend the Second Amendment? Go for it. Do it the right way if, if, you, want to, if you think you can do it. But see, our system is alive and well. That's why they do things like mandates you know and the public is 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 cowarded into is cowed into believing that a mandate and a law and a regular the, that they're all the same things see well, i don't I really that, that, was what I was, that was just what i was saying is like yeah what what we consider a mandate in our homes like you said the, the word enforce. yeah the word yeah. we we enforce it in that way but legal ease um, for the government is not the same definition. The mandate, no. yeah, no. That, that's all I meant, is yeah. that, uh, is that I, mean, I mean, we could just say mandate has two definitions. One is what we believe in our homes, you know, moms and dads can mandate whatever they want in the house. Yeah. But number two, legal ease for mandate is interpreted as suggestion. It's not a law. Yeah. It's, you know, so this, this is what people don't know. They don't know that about no, the regs. No, they don't. They don't understand that about the regulations. Yeah. And that is why they fear it. And also, you know, they think that they have to get permission for everything, which me and you just don't. Yeah. Or, you know. This is a good one. Grumpy Acres is saying your constitutional birthright is only as secure as your willingness to defend it. And we have this conversation a lot around here. Because, uh, well, Neethi, you made mention of it. We do adult education, and it started out as people just asking us, hey, can you show us how to do this? And we, yeah, we'll show you. Um, but it's gotten more formal, and so we can get more people, and it's more scheduled and things like that. Mm -hmm. But this comes up a lot, and people will use language, like this language right here, your constitutional birthright is only as secure as your willingness to defend it. Well, what does that mean exactly? How do I defend my constitutional birthright? How do I do that? It's almost like uh, that sentence right there means that I needed to to uh, like arm wrestle somebody for my freedom or take them in a gunfight over my freedom. 
I don't agree with that. I think what needs to be done is we need to reinforce in people's minds, you are free people, right? Not you should be free people. You right. are a free per person. Now, you may walk into the Dollar General and some girl wants to tell you to put a face mask on, but then you have to say no <laughs> and then go about your business. Like you, you have to, like with constitutional rights, say, Carrying a firearm, that's an easy one to figure out. Um, you have the right to own and bear arms. You can carry it in your coat, under your coat, under your hat. You can hang it around your neck. You have that right. Somebody might say something to you, but how far do they want to push it? And how far are you willing to push it? You just, you, you know, if I'm walking down the street, let's say in town, and I have a rifle over my shoulder or probably around here that wouldn't attract any attention. But let's say I had a, see, I don't know what would attract attention around here, but let's say, oh, certain words. Let's say First Amendment. Let's talk First Amendment. Um, oh, hate speech. You can't say that word, right? And, and I don't want to offend anybody, but let's just say, um, What's a good word? Okay, I'm Irish. Let's say Mick. You can't say Irish. You, I mean, you can't say Mick. 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 Okay, what is anybody going to do? There's nothing you can do. You can call, you can call me names. You can point fingers at me and say that's hate speech. But you can't do anything. There's nothing you can do. You can't kick me out of my house. You can't take my birthday away. You can't. There's nothing you can do. So we have to just press those things and and continue to do it and say, take your best shot. You say I can't sell milk. OK, you've told me that now I'm going to sell milk. What are you going to do now? They're not going to do anything because there is nothing they, they can do. But you have to be willing to go up against somebody who's driving a, an official state car or got a neat little badge that they can show you or, you know, they have a white coat on with a clipboard and say, you can't do that. Say, well, I'm going to do it, you know, <laughs> and there's nothing you can do. And they, they, they actually go away after a while, which I kind of miss them actually, because it was getting fun. You know, all the things that they told me that I couldn't do. And I thought, you know, I, I, I owe it to the people that I lost in my military career, guys just like me, and I made it and they didn't. They were doing the same thing I was doing. I do them a disservice if I allow their, their sacrifice for my constitutional rights to be taken from me or coerced from me by some bureaucrat in a white lab coat with a hairnet on, you know, or, or even a... You know, I'm, I'm definitely pro-police. I, I like police mostly. There's been some bad incidences, I guess. I've never had one, really. Guy used a bad language with me one time. But um, mostly I think we need them. And um, I'm, I'm for them. And I think that even sometimes with them, you have to say, nope, <laughs> nice try, Junior. You know, you, Mr. Baker, do you mind if we look in your trunk? I say, well, I really don't mind, but uh, you really need a warrant to look in my trunk. So, no. And you know that. Nice try. Nice try. But no, you're not looking in my trunk. All right. Same I thing. You to... have to know your rights. You have to know them. Yes. I'm sorry. Maybe. I can really rant on that. The people that listen to me, I tell them all the time. I, I really try to reinforce it. If you download the Bill of Rights to the U.S. Constitution which I'm here to tell you is the supreme law of the land. And I know because I hit that press the test button. If you, if you Google my name and then Michigan, you will see we had a lengthy court battle with the big players in the state of Michigan, the Department of Agriculture, Department of Natural Resources, and the Department of uh, Attorney General, all very well-funded thug groups and our constitution stood up against that because they wanted to take something from me that's none of their business. And I just dug my heels in and I said, it was really simple too. I just said, no, I'm not doing it. 
And you'd think that, you know, all of those guys involved, they were, they were actually doing the bidding for industrial agriculture. You'd think they would have had an avenue to force me to do what, what they, they wanted. wanted me to do. And mm -hmm. my no was no. And my property is protected under the Fifth Amendment. And it worked. You know, I, I wasn't sure if it would work because mm -hmm. I didn't know enough about the law. But it did work. And that applies to everything. If you mm -hmm. want to raise a chicken and sell an egg, it's protected under the Fifth Amendment. It's it's really clear. It's really simple. Lawyers don't like that because well, they don't they don't operate under constitutional law because no, they, because no, they're it only would put them out of a job. Yeah, they're only operating under the illegal laws, which is the whole point of this whole conversation that I've been having about natural law, and 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 I yeah. don't want I don't want to I don't want to have to convince people how free they are. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that most people right now are under mind control. Yeah, I'd agree because, with that. Because there is a, there is actually, a, has been an attack on humanity hmm. and they have mind controlled everyone because they, there is a race to control the human consciousness. I agree. And I totally agree it, with you. That's the reason why it is my encouragement, you guys, the reason that I've had these conversations is because I wanted people, all of humanity, even the ones that are not protected under our constitution, like I'm talking about globally, what I want is for all the human beings to currently wake up to realize that maybe you're mind controlled. If you are yeah. triggered day to day, when you're out in the street, if you're operating in chaos and confusion and anxiety and depression or, you know, you're on medication, maybe you might want to consider that you were tricked. If you watch a lot of television, if you, you know, if you're watching television, you are under some level of mind control because that is how they program everybody. That's why it's called television programming. And so this series has been uh, the reason I chose to do this series is because I wanted to bring people's attention to the fact that they um, that someone is trying to to control their consciousness. And I would rather that people know, hey, you get to think what you want to think like you get to think what you want to think, <laughs> you know, you get to come up with your own ideas. You can do your own ideas. Sure. And, you know, um, instead, there's too many people out there allowing. And you have to allow. You have to choose bondage. You're so free. You have to choose bondage. It does, it's not happening to you. You're giving it away. Yeah. You are, you are giving agree. them your power. I agree. Yeah. And so, you know, um, I think that. Go watch Mark's channel. Go watch Tag's channel. Learn how to, you know, live free. Meaning, because you've forgotten. I want everybody out there to remember who they are. I want you to remember who you are because you were worthy and you were born worthy. And there's too many people right now that don't, they don't know that. They don't, they think, they don't know, um, we were talking about this the other day, Mark. They don't know that anarchy means no rulers, no slaves. They don't know that. Hmm. They think anarchy is this because of linguistics theft. Okay. Yeah. They think anarchy is blowing things up and destroying property. That is not anarchy. They think that if uh, the government collapses, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make popcorn. Yeah, really. Me too. <laughs> yeah, because then by. you get to really stand watch what you get to really have a good show, don't you? Yeah. It, it'll be it'll be a really good show. So, so I'm not the, sure it hasn't happened, honestly. I yeah. actually agree. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with I absolutely you. Absolutely agree with you. There's something going on that we're gonna yep. find out here in a minute, and I think it might have already happened. But 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 you know, I, I want everyone to know that you have to care. You have to care. The eighth and generative principle of, of, of the law of nature is it's, it's the generative principle. That is the eighth principle. It's the hidden principle. 
It is the caring principle. It's the principle that you have to care. Because if you don't care, how are you going to put your thought and in, into action? Hmm. If you don't care, how are you putting your thought into action? That's a loaded question. Yeah. Neethi, I had a I had a, a law professor that I know really well who once told me that freedom and tyranny share one major thing. Oh, what's that? And, and I said, Hey, so, so what's that? And this guy is a like super smart law professor. And he says, law, law, uh, freedom and tyranny both share one thing. They both have to be declared. And what he was saying was that we, as a people, tyranny only works if we declare it. Freedom only works if we declare it. And so, as to Mark's point, you know, earlier, if you say no, you're just not declaring that tyranny. You're not right. You're not agreeing to the terms of the deal. Right. And Makes and sense. I thought it was a really smart comment from a liberal law professor. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. In the United States, we're governed by consent. Mm -hmm. And if you follow that back, mm -hmm. we're not a democracy. We're a representative republic. Correct. So we elect our representatives and they consent on our behalf to the laws that they make. So generally, the two party system is at odds, which is good. So they don't want to patent. Neither one of them wants to let the other side pass anything, which is kind of good. And if the Democrats are going to pass a law, then the Republicans will say, wait a minute, that's not constitutional. And then if it goes the other way, the Democrats will use the same thing. That's not constitutional. And it works every time, because if it isn't a constitutional action, it's clear. <laughs> it's the, the Bill of Rights is, is extremely clear. And uh, so it, it is working. It's, but you're right, Neethi, this thing that's going on in the United States, it's just the next level of a mind game. Um. And I, I'll bet you, Tad, you've heard the statement, you're watching a movie. I just feel mm -hmm. that about you. Mm -hmm. And I think we are. Um, yeah. I, think I would the actually, whole thing, I, I would do it. Go, go, go ahead. ahead, Mark. I apologize. Well, I would, just, I was, I would, I would go argue out on a limb that. here, but I thought that uh, the Trump presidency was extremely bizarre. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it kind of worked for me. Like I'm a, I'm a pretty conservative guy. So when I saw some of my liberal, uh, you know, counterparts, when I saw them losing their minds, it was sort of interesting to watch, mm -hmm. sort of fun. It was fun. It was very entertaining. <laughs> but entertaining. this presidency and the election and everything that happened was ex is, is just as bizarre. I mean, this guy mm -hmm. doesn't seem to know his own name. It's extremely bizarre. So I... I kind of think that we are watching just a, a drama being played out in front of us and there's something bigger going on behind the scenes. I, that's, that's my feeling. I just have a gut feeling on that. And uh, I did get some Intel early on in 17 and because mm -hmm. what I, what I was involved in before when I was active duty, some of the Intel made sense. And I know that there was some big, big things happening uh, within some of the three letter agencies. And so, yeah, well, I don't, I didn't trust the three letter agencies never did. And I don't think anybody should. I, I think they've been allowed to operate in secrecy way too long, but, um, yeah, I think things are going on and, um, guys like us all, here's a great thing. Here's a great thing, right? It used to be when we first started producing food here, and this was in our first five years, we had our butcher shop running and we trying to get a customer base together. And we would have people in our big town here, Cadillac, that would say, well, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. If, if you deliver it to me, I wouldn't mind it. If you put it on the porch, because I'm real busy, you know, and I can't, I can't come to the farm and get food. We're now after Wu flu, uh, we delivered, 20 gallons of milk into Cadillac yesterday. And the people that were meeting us at the delivery point, they were all smiles, very much leaning forward, very much willing to help or they wanted information. And all. So it's really changed. 
Um, this yeah. operation that we've gone through has helped people to understand what they need instead of what they've been told they want. They really don't like NFL. They just feel as though <laughs> that's what you do while you're drinking beer and eating Doritos, you know? So, and, but they do really don't like it. Nobody really, I don't, think, I don't. Anyway, there's my slam on NFL. I've never really liked it. I like the cheerleaders, but that was. About it. <laughs> but even now, you know, Mark, I don't like that so much anymore. <laughs> I think I would echo you echo what you're saying. I actually think we're in some, you know, twist of fifth generation, sixth generation, seventh generation warfare. It's going on behind the scenes, economically, spiritually. You know, it's going on psychologically. It's going on through education. It's been waged for a long, long time. And and I think to your point earlier. And to Neethi's point earlier, the single biggest message that has to be spread is to be free takes courage. You can't be the lion in the Serengeti and wait for someone to deliver, deliver you a bowl of food. It's not how it works. Right. And knowledge and is required. Knowledge is required and action is required. That's what That's I keep true. saying is that knowledge is required. If you don't know your Bill of Rights, then go read it. Yeah. If you don't understand you read it, read it every day. Read it until you understand it. Read it until you believe it instead of whatever all this other crazy nonsense is that everybody keeps hearing all this noise. Like, why don't you read the Bill of Rights out loud and record it and then just play it over and over again until you can believe it? Because everybody wants to come and learn how to run a food church, but they're, they don't have any courage. They want, they want me to give them some license to do this. There's no license for this. Licenses no are great, aren't they? Yeah, I'm like, there's, I can't write you a permission slip for this. You just have to go out there and tell them no. Yeah. And, you know, do what you're going to do. But, like, you also have to manage the people. They don't know that I'm over here educating. Like, Mark, I'm sure you got to educate all your eaters. I mean, if my eaters oh, yeah. weren't, weren't educated, then they could try to create problems for me. Well, I don't do business with, with dehumanized consumers, okay? Hmm. Anyway, to wrap well, this up, because I want to honor. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Well, OK, real quick. Um, another reason to be optimistic at this point is, first of all, the the enemies of freedom, they're telling you you shouldn't be optimistic that you're probably going to die this winter in the cold with no food and nobody likes you and go eat worms. That's what they want you to believe all the time. But here's why you should be optimistic. Um, it used to be that we would want to tell people you are a free person and you're free under the constitution. I discovered it because they, they came down on me, right? I probably never would have discovered it, but now, especially in adult education classes, people come and they'll say things like, well, don't you have to have a license for this? Don't you have to be like, uh, blessed by the state to do education and and cut up pigs for instance and we say no you don't so so there's a an interest at a at a completely different level than there's ever been and now people are questioning hey how come i have to ask you guys if i want to drill a well on my property hey how come i got to ask you if i want to put a new window set in my house. How come I need a license or permission from you, sons of bitches? Excuse my language. Why do I need permission from you? You're not my mom and dad. So people are questioning this. In the state of Michigan, they they tried to say that if you were a barber, you had to shut down because you'd be spreading the woo flu, right? Well, there was a guy, and he says, and he he actually uh, cut the hair of a lot of state troopers because of where he was located. And they were friends and everything. And he just said, you know, I, I'm staying open. I need to cut your guy's hair. And the, the state, our, our governor, Whitmer, she's a nut. She uh, wanted to take his license, right? And this was great, what he said. He says, I don't need a license to cut hair. I only need a pair of scissors and a comb. And he kept cutting hair. And he became sort of the... The poster child. I, I almost think that he was listening to me because he said stuff that I say all the time. And it called into question all of this. You need a license to 
to do just about anything, but I don't have the only license I have is a fishing license and a driver's license. And I'm actually, the only reason I have the fishing license is because I don't want to lock it up with a conservation officer when I'm trying to enjoy fishing with one of my kids, you know? So, okay, I'll pay the 15 bucks, but I'm doing it under duress, but I do it. And same thing, the state police have been pretty good to me in this state. They've actually protected me. And um, because they're, they're a cut above, they learn the constitution and they are truly peace officers. Their, their hierarchy is not good, but um, the average patrolman is a good, good person and I support them. And so I do get a driver's license because I don't want to have to, you know, I don't want to have to go that route. But I'm, I think a day is coming when you're going to have legislators that say, OK, we like we have to get licenses. For what? Let's clarify this for the public so they can understand where all this money goes and why they have to ask permission to, to travel go freely. <laughs> yeah, to, to, yeah travel. to travel freely, anything, you know, yeah. it's it's gotten way out of hand. Mm -hmm. Same thing with farming. They'd be doing the same thing to us right now that they're doing to the Dutch farmers if we were licensed to farm. And they that was the route they were trying to take us under the the struggle that I had with the state. Right. I mean, what they've done to everybody here is this, they've, they've, they've monopolized the sales aspect. So they feel like you don't have a market. So you don't have the income to support the production. And that's what m me and Mark and other people like us are trying to teach people who are producing food that, you know, you just need to connect with your eaters and have a conversation with yeah, them. And you don't yeah. need to, to work with people in this other way, because that is the problem. That is, that is the reason why Brazil has beef, you know, in America. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and they, they tell beef people here in the States that, you know, this is worthless. You should be doing, you know, um, agritourism or whatever crap. And yeah. that's because they, they want us to waste our natural resources. Going back yeah. again to my natural law conversation here is, you know, when you're operating under natural law and honoring the law, then the hoop is, is you know, properly uh, held together and and it works. It regenerates. It is. It's a generative hoop. Mm -hmm. and, and so regeneration isn't just what happens when you have livestock on the land and in the soil. It also happens when you are operating in alignment with your thoughts, emotions, and your actions. Stop operating in fear and stop being reactionary and start being deliberate and being intentional by knowing what you want. What do you want? Until you know what you want, don't do anything. Just stop. Be quiet. And then what, what do you want? 99% of the people, you guys... When I run into them, Tag and Mark, I'm talking to both of you guys. Like when I'm out in the street and I talk to somebody and I'm like, what do you want? They they have no idea. That's like deer in headlights. Do you get yeah. this? Like deer in headlights. What do you want? My children know they better have an answer because otherwise, you know, like I'm like, what do you want? What are you doing? What do you want? Yeah. They better know. They better know what they want. You know, I have something else to add, if I could, <laughs> because you never know who would hear this. One of the biggest lies that is told, which I believe is a spell, it's, it's a, a satanic spell. Mm. They lie to the public and they put forth this austerity mindset, like everything's running out and there Ooh. is no regenerative. There is no regeneration. Right. And um when you can wrap your head around the abundance mindset, then everything really changes. And when you have these, th these uh, bureaucrat weenies tell you, well, we need to slow this down because we have to save for everybody else. It just doesn't even make sense. They really don't know what they're talking to about. Most of them come out of the university system that, that twists their minds. Anyway, they don't even know. 
in a spell. Uh, that one alone. It's, but it's under the spell. <laughs> it does. But you get into this uh, abundance mindset, and then all of a sudden, there's you know there's um, there's excitement to farm. There's prosperity in it. You know, there's a a future for the people that you love. It's it's a good message, and that message is hidden. And it's the counter to it is there ain't no money in farming, which is not true. That is not true at all. That's what I was talking about, Mark. Yeah. The occulted, the occulted knowledge was that you there is not enough. There is lack. You know yeah. that lack mentality of there. You know we don't have enough. That's why people are hoarding. Yeah. Okay, and this is for tag. So, Tag, I want you to speak about this from a prepping perspective because I'm sick and tired of people collecting a whole bunch of crap. This is just to, to your point, Mark. Like, they have this lack mentality, and then they just start collecting a bunch of crap. And I'm like, this is not, this is not proper preparation. Knowledge is the preparation. Knowledge. You need to so know too. how to do the things. You need to have the animals live on the ground. You yeah. need to have tactical okay. landscape that you can defend. You don't need freaking beans and rice and freaking shelves. I mean, I'm not saying you don't do a little mm -hmm. strategic prepping and planning. Yeah. And, you know, you got to do things based on your, like these two gentlemen, I'm sure can speak to all the things that you have to do <coughs> to prepare for the real winter. That's real. And <laughs> to ensure the mm -hmm. lives are on the ground. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but Tag, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think and I've said this a lot of times on a lot of channels. I think all prepping leads to homesteading and all homesteading leads to freesteading, which is why I built the social media <laughs> platform freesteading and why I called it freesteading. I'm going to check um, that out. Yeah, um, it's uh, and so I think like for me, I was I started as a prepper, you know, getting out of the army in uh, 1994 and uh you know i started back then a little bit but it didn't take me very long to wake up and realize that my supplies were going to run out and i didn't have the skills to continue it i needed to get better and now you know it's so funny here i am all these years later and i don't really prep for anything other than you know how am i going to protect my water lines from freezing in the winter how am i going to produce enough energy to get me through how do i grow enough food to you know can enough salsa so this winter i don't have to starve from salsa because i love salsa i mean it's the other you know it's the it's just that that life has totally changed um, for me. But I think, Neethi, the advice that I would give people is not stop preparing, but try to understand where preparing takes you and be playing for where the puck's going to be, not where the puck is today, as Wayne Gretzky once yeah. said. You know yeah. what I mean? And so I, I would not discourage them, but at the same time, I would just say, hey, it's you can only store so much. You're going to get to a point where you just can't do more than that. And right. um, like I said, I started as a prepper in – grew to a homesteader and now I consider myself a freesteader, which is, you know, taking my own freedom back, taking my own responsibility for my beliefs back. And yeah. um, I'm not following the status quo. I'm doing what I want to do, living my life. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not taking anyone else's constitutional freedoms away. I'm, you know, in fact, I'm helping their constitutional freedom. You know, we're building huge community, got a huge group out here that we work with, you know, all the time. And um, so, yeah, I would not discourage them. I would just tell them to play for what a puck's going to be. Okay. Hey, you know what? We we should we should cross pollinate here. Our our thing is the anyone can farm dot experience. The anyone can farm experience dot com. Okay. Right. So, and uh, we also have a Facebook group. It's called the Anyone Can Farm Tribe on Facebook, and it, and we should you know allow our people to see some additional material. Absolutely. hundred percent. Community is where it's at. I mean, yes. we learned yeah. this in the military. Um, we, we have to get good at what we're doing. So we have to be competent yeah. and then we have to be confident in what, what we're going, where we're going and how we're doing it. And then yeah. we have to build community. And it seems like community just comes if you're good at something and you're willing to show other people how to do it. I you know, Mark, it's grown a lot agree. for us. You know, what started as five or six people years ago, I mean, now we're talking about building schools and community buildings. I mean, it's, it's totally grown to this huge thing. You know, we do the, all these events together every single year. I've this year, just in the last month, I've stood a barn, moved a barn, 
Um, huh. You know, moved firewood. We do homestead rotations where everybody comes to a homestead at a time to work. Um, there's just so much that goes on uh, in it, but it's grown a lot. And I'm excited what the future holds. Yeah. Yeah, me too. We're, we're all hopeful and we are all yeah. are excited. And I think that everything is happening in the way that it's supposed to. I know for sure, yeah. for sure that we are rolling into the golden age. Mm -hmm. I also know that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to die on the way there because when you are, when all the centralized structures are collapsing because the dark ages and all these devils are being washed out, it's a quantum leap. You can't mm -hmm. go from being, in, you know, in this crazy dark age world into, you know, natural law and golden age without a washout of all the immoral and crazy, like the devilish spells that Mark's talking about, like all that craziness has yeah. to be washed away. Well, you can't just wash it away in a blink, you know, so no, it has to actually point. happen because as, as you gentlemen both know very well, as hopefully a lot of people that are watching us know, like everything requires effort and pressure and you know, we're putting pressure. We've been doing this for a long time. And it's like Tag said about the energy. It is just the energy. So that energy and, and it's yeah. energy and pressure over time is how you move the needle. And that's what we're doing. And so it is our encouragement for everybody out there. I mean, I, it is really my encouragement for you all. Like definitely make sure I put freesteading.com. I put the anyone can farmexperience.com in, in the, um, in the, I'll have it in the show notes too, okay. but I just want everybody to go check, check everyone out. And Mark, I couldn't wait for you to meet tag. I knew you would be fast friends mm -hmm. and, you know, I have several of you gentlemen that I'm trying to get together, but you know, it's hard for me to like get everybody pinned down at the same mm -hmm. time. So, <laughs> so we're working on it. We're working on it, yep. but, um, but I really, you know, like I can talk to both of you forever because because we're so in line with each other and it's so much fun. And I, I appreciate both of you so much for making time to come and jump on with me today. Um, and everybody out there, you know, who's watching, um, I know we're going to have a lot of replays, you know, check these guys out, pay attention to what's going on, jump on freesteading.com. It's a, it's, it's the better thing than Facebook because you can speak your truth and no one's going to like block and banish you for nope. being a real human being, having an adult conversation. I'll check it out. I will check <laughs> it out. You definitely should come out there, Mark, and check it out and be a yeah, part of it. And, um, you know, it was so good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a while and I, I really need to come to Michigan, but is there, it seems like so many things have been going on here. You know, it's like, you know, you remember you were like, when are you going to get out of her? And you kept saying to me, like, you come know, out of her, my people. I know. <laughs> and, and we're, we're looking for land and we found some and we're working on it. So it's not that we're not making any strides towards that. We found some things we're, you know, in that process. And so I have to stay close while we make our moves. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Hey, I, I, I lived in the city for a long time too. It, it was not easy to make the break, you know, it had to line up. Well, you know, my husband has a whole thing and now he's turning his ship and, you know, got to wait. I'm, I'm work, we're working together. Just yeah. get it turned. So we see a lot of younger like late thirties type people that have got established careers. Uh, generally our classes are about, you know, between 10 and 15 people and they're several days. So you get a chance to talk to people for, for those and uh, young couples that are punching out of the system and they're not, they're not doing it to be fashionable. There's a sense of urgency there. And I'm encouraged to see that because they're good people and we're glad to have them in the lifeboats. Yes. Well, yeah, you know, the great, the great resignation coming out of, you know, the woo flu and now the Fauci ouchy, the great <laughs> resignation that came out of that might end up, if we look back at history being the greatest time to ever be an American, it might yeah. turn out to be the thing that turned the, the tide. And yeah. it'll cost me a career, but yes. it might be, it might be. 
I I can't wait for our next class because you just get the coolest people coming to you, and then they they want to talk about really interesting things, things that I'm into. I didn't stay with what I was doing because it didn't interest me anymore. This yeah. interests me, yeah. so I love it. I I think it's great. I I found my niche for sure. Amen. I love what I'm doing. Yeah. Well. Turns out I better go out there and do it, or no one else is going to. <laughs> I know. I, an hour and a half. This, we we like really ran way over, but the, we were just having too much fun, and and yeah. so I hope I hope that's okay, gentlemen. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to disrespect your time or anything. No, that's okay. hey, Neithy, Neithy, did you know that I do a live every Friday night on YouTube that usually goes three hours? Every I didn't Friday. Know that. Oh yeah, I'm a talker. Keep going. What bro. is that? What is the address there? Yeah, so my YouTube channel is Life Done Free. Life done. Yep. Because free. I made a conscious effort to make sure my life was done free. I do one on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's the Anyone Can Farm Experience on YouTube. Okay. And then hey, they on, Mark, on freesteading, we have an events calendar. And there's a ton of channels. Deep South Homestead, Permapastures, Neefy. And they all put them all on there so the whole audience can come and click on them and join. Okay. There's all kinds of stuff. I didn't stuff do on that. There. I should have put oh. it on the calendar. I'm so bad. I'm a, I'm going to be better at this. Next year when my, I do uh, my series, I'll put it on there. Okay. But, my, um, my oldest, my second oldest son is the guy that does our media. Okay. So I'll turn him on to that. Okay. And maybe we'll cross pollinate there. Yeah, you can, uh, in, if you connect, if you tell your son, if he connects with me, tag, tag and be. On freesteading, he can direct message me. He can get right to me. Just hit a connect and we can chit chat. He can, I'll help him through the whole process. I'll have him do it then. His name is Joe, okay. Joe Baker. Okay. 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 I'll make that happen. Good. I'm so excited that you're going to be part of it. That's yeah. going to be really good. That'll really grow things. Yes. Mm -hmm. All boats will float higher. Okay. That's Great right. resignation. We're going to take it back. <laughs> I love it. And I love you guys. I hope y'all have a very Merry Christmas. Yep, and thank, thank you, you everybody out there tuning in. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be doing next year with my, you know, what with my series, but I'll be doing something. I'll let you guys know, like keep following me um, and checking in and I will be back in the new year. And very we good. will talk to you soon. I'll actually be on Baker's uh, Anyone Can Farm Experience in the new year. I'm going to be on your show. Yeah, that's right. We were supposed to interview you tonight. I know, I know. I, I apologize. I have family coming in tonight, so I got to go to the airport, but I will be there. In the hey, to, to, before we go to both you guys, yeah. there's a conference going on in Georgia on February the 22nd through the 25th called Next Steps Conference. And the topic of the conference, it's a big workshop about creating a parallel society. It's you about keep food this and I got to sign up for this thing. Yeah, you guys got to go look at it. And I know that there's, they're probably still looking for speakers and things, but there's like 40 people. I'm doing, a, um, I'm speaking on breaking the uh, technocratic culture and how we escape it. But there's, it's going to be a pr pretty good, cool, pretty cool deal. So I'd make sure you check it out, Neithy, for sure, because you're close. Do you have a link that maybe you could send me for that? Because we're looking for something to do in the winter. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, I'll, I'll find it and I'll share it with you, Mark. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah the web address cool. is next-steps.info. Info. I'm, I'm doing it right now. And then, yeah. um, Mark, I'll make sure you get it also. Good, because all I have is a magic marker right here and it, <laughs> I'm, I'm out of space. No, no, no. <laughs> Mr. Sure. Preparedness here. I don't even have a nope. pen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's we're doing Somebody construction. Took that room apart. Room, so. That's why, right? They took that room apart and they didn't put it back together the right we way. We did. Did you know that? Did you yeah. know that? We this room yeah. is now the office because the business has grown. So we had to change this from the pantry to the office now. So we put a floor in back here, and that's why everything's kind of jumbled up. But it's done, so I'm actually warm, right? Mm. <laughs> usually when i'm back here i'm cold well i'm glad you're nice and toasty and staying warm and you guys hold the line hold the we'll line do. we'll do don't, don't give an inch not an inch okay <laughs> sayonara